What's cracking, everyone? Venom Astera back with another Venomous Classic. I know I've done a lot of these in a row, but quite frankly, this is what I've been inspired to do, and I have never, ever in the history of this channel mailed it in or just made a video because, well, it was sort of time to make a video. No, no, no. Every time I've ever released a video, it has been because I wanted to make a video and I thought that it would be worth watching. So this is why you've seen a lot of consecutive Venomous Classic videos, because this has sort of been what I've been in the mood to make. This is another Idra game from Brood War, and as you can tell from the quality, which it is impossible for me to improve, it's from very long ago. It's from early 2009. Now, I don't know if you guys remember 2009, but it was nearly 10 years ago. This was back in the year when Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was released. This is when I was a freshman in high school, before I played StarCraft. I was pretty much still a console gamer. I had quit RuneScape by the time that this video had released because they ruined the Wildy. <laughs> and I had moved on to Call of Duty, which is sort of weird to think about because I haven't played that game in a very long time. And I had been playing, if you go a few years after that, I had been playing StarCraft for a while. So this is classic. This is really, really old. And the players this game are Idra, Greg Fields of America, the American Macro Terran. He played Zerg in StarCraft II, known as the Graken, Gregors, the Macro Machine. He's a lot of different nicknames. He was one of the best non-Koreans to ever touch the game. And, and Artosis, whose opinion I trust over anyone's in the entire scene, went as far as to call him the Foreigner Bonjois, which Bonjois is a highly dominant player for a long period of time. Essentially, around this era, 2008, 2009, 2010, Idra was the best of the non-Koreans. And he really just showed off a skill level that was impeccable. Now, touching on the video quality, you can't improve upon video quality of the source quality. So, if it was released in 480p, there's nothing I can do in an editing software or with render settings or anything else that can make it go higher than 480p. What the original is, is what you get. So, I realize that the quality isn't that great. These games are very, very old. Now, what is the Venomous Classic series, if you're new to this channel? Well, the Venomous Classic series is a series in which I take a look back at classic games that I think are worth revisiting and worth archiving. It is not in any way a rip-off or a pirate of the original video. The original video is in the description. But YouTube has been going on a crusade of wrongfully banning channels. And on top of that, this is a game that I like a lot and is very fun to watch, I think is worth remembering. So it's part of the Venomous Classic series where I revisit it, take a look back, and just sort of re-examine it and appreciate it for what it is. Link of the original video will be in the description, and I encourage you to check that out. So moving on to these games, it's Idra vs. F91. I know I didn't introduce F91 earlier on, but he has much fewer titles than Hydra. As we can see, the map is Destination, a classic map, and a map that is currently available on the SC Remastered Ladder pool. And Idra is doing a little bit of a vulture glitch here to get it through the minerals. And he's going to kite the Zerglings here. He wants to do drone damage. And it's worth noting that when I say glitch, I don't mean it's an abuse or a cheat or a hack. In Brood War, there are a lot of little, little, there are, there are a lot of little cutesy micro tricks that you can do to sort of squeeze units through neut neutral minerals and, and just sort of little micro tricks that you can do. It's a lot more grimy than StarCraft 2. And Idra rushed out of Vulture here. He's going to kill a plethora of Lings. And unfortunately for Idra, a Hydra will get out here. And it looks like. Idra is pretty much going to give up on microwing that vulture after the Hydra gets out and he's going to go into a macro game. He's going for multiple barracks here. So it looks like it's going to be a bio opener. He's researching stem. He's getting an eBay. F91 is a Chinese 
Zerg player who plays very abnormally. Idra once described it as, actually when I say once, it was after this series. He says that he played so abusively that anyone who didn't know how he played, he raped. And that is a quote verbatim, so don't get mad at me and try to virtue signal about me using the word rape. It's a quote, and you can't divert and dilute someone's quote in the name of political correctness because quite frankly not only would that be inaccurate and intellectually dishonest but it would take away from the truth so f91 is pumping out a plethora of hydras here idra's rushing out a bunker at his natural he's transferred workers out he's pumping out marines aka jim rainers he has three racks he has a factory plus one attack is on the way and as I mentioned, Stim is on the way. He also has a starport on the way. And if you don't know Destination, it's one of these classic maps, sort of like Tau Cross or Fighting Spirit, that you sort of see a lot with classic games played on it. And F91's lair is done, of course. He has three hatcheries. He's getting his Evo chamber. And it looks like he's making more Hydras, and he's taking a third. Now, Destination sort of has two different third bases you can take. One at about the 2.30 position on the map, and one at the 9 o'clock. Each player also has a pocket third base that does not include gas, so very frequently you will see players sort of take that as like the fourth or fifth base because they're really looking to just get more gas. Idra, of course, is researching range for his Jim Rainers. And he's started to make tanks. Science facility is on the way, so he's going to be getting science vessels very quickly. Science vessels, of course, provide vision and can cast the ability Irradiate once it's researched. Irradiate, of course, the bread and butter of Terran vs. Zerg, especially against Mutas. And F91 has a plethora of Hydras stationed at the natural of Idra. Now, Destination has two big ramps leading into each natural. We can see F91 is producing a lot of Hydras here as they surge across the map. Queen's Nest is on the way for F91, so he's going into Hive Tech, and Idra, as I mentioned before, is going into Science Vessel. Science Vessel is sort of like the Zerg version of Hive Tech. It's what you really need to hang in the early game. Tank finishing there for the American Macro Zerg. And this series was a part of a, a seven-game set that F91 played against Idra. This was near the beginning of the time that Idra was in Korea. And after this match, Idra pointed out that in many ways, it took players several months to sort of gain improvement from spending time and training in Korea. Because right whenever you first moved over between the culture, so culture shock and playing with new players and getting adjusted, your play didn't really skyrocket in ability immediately. You sort of had to spend a significant amount of time there, which is why we saw Idra spend more time in Korea than Noni, than Rhett, virtually than any foreigner in that later era, close to Wings of Liberty. Of course, there were players like Gurr that went over very, very early on, but stayed in places and apartments with a lot of foreigners and sort of ended up moving on things to like professional poker as opposed to professional StarCraft pretty early. Whereas of course Idra played professional StarCraft all the way until 2013 and he grinded in Korea for a very long time even up into the StarCraft 2 era. Of course he played in the first three GSLs one of the most famous of which he lost to MVP, widely considered the best StarCraft II Wings of Liberty player there was. And Idra has a dropship loaded up here. He's sort of ranging out with the science vessel, and the tanks pummel the Hydras. So Idra's going to push the Hydras back. Now, a big reason why he sort of waited until the science vessel was out to even bother to push out is because many Zerg players would go for lurkers and would just bury lurkers right outside of your bridges. And it looks like Idra's going to do a bit of a move out here with Marine Medic Tank. This can be a potent move. Now he does have a vessel too. Now the reason the vessel is important is because you could do this micro trick called hold position on lurkers. 
where you made them not fire, you could have multiple lurkers buried at a certain location, let the Terran army work walk on top of you and then unhold the position and have all the lurkers shoot at once, decimate the Terran army. And then Irradiate's going down into the Hydra, the Sign Cecil goes down, but about a quarter of the Hydras die there, and then several more Hydras die. So F91 paid a valuable price for that science vessel snipe, and we can see that Consume is being researched for the Defilers, and a lot of Lurkers moving forward here. Zidra stims forward, and we need to see a stim here, because Zidra does not have any more science vessels, and both of his tanks go down. He was forced to retreat his bio, but Idra does have more tanks. He has a science vessel now, and whammy, a lot of the Hydras go down, and Idra had two tanks in the very far forward, but then had more tanks in the background. And I sort of feel like F91 thought that he had killed all of Idra's tanks and very confidently moved forward. And all of his Hydras pretty much were eviscerated. And we can see that Idra is encroaching down onto this third base. And he's doing this very common tactic where he micros the science vessel forward sort of dangerously to check for any burrowed units like lurkers. And then whenever he doesn't see them, he moves his army forward because Burrow Lurkers with the hold position micro are a big threat. And we can see here that Lurkers are going down. Two of them do die, but a lot of Hydras are there. Idra fends them off with some siege tank shots, which I like to see. But the Defilers are out. Idra has to be very careful because Consume is done. And once these Defilers have Consume, of course, they can Consume Lings and then use Dark Swarm which just completely changes the nature of the game, but it looks like Idra might actually snipe this third base off as he cut off all the reinforcements of F91, and those are Lurker Cocoons, so he does need to get the base, and he does. The Lurkers do burrow. All of this stuff for Idra is dead. He shoots off a scan there and kills the Lurkers, so these units on the right side of the map will continue to be annoying, but Idra does narrow out and even out the base count, and on many levels, this is what the game is all about, because he has two NG bays, he has tank and science vessels. Zerg pretty much has to be a base up in this matchup. So losing that third base was big for F91, and F91 is ranging out at his third base to clear out the Marine Medic. Now the reason that that small little contingency of Marine Medic was there was because Idra wanted to check and see how many bases F91 had. Once he saw it was three and not four, he thought, okay, well I can actually commit heavily to this attack over here at F91's third. Of course, F91 tried to take the third over there in the bottom left. Not the very corner base with no gas, but the one where we saw the Marine Medic. Idra killed the drone, and that meant that F91 had to divert his army out there. After that, F91 threw a little swarm out, made Idra retreat, but as, assuming Idra takes a third base, which of course he will at some point, he is ahead. And even if it's just two base versus two base, he's marginally ahead. Lots of Hydras here for F91. As he doesn't really have the gas to make lurkers like he wants. We can see Idra is going to stem forward here with this tank vessel marine. And both of the armies trading pretty damn well, but Ling's getting on top of the tanks, and that's not good, as suddenly Idra's army is not trading as well as F-91's army, and it's going to be about a wash for both players as a lot of units die. Idra, of course, trying to take his third. He does have his third command sitter made, does have a contingency army of Marines made. He is way up in supply, but the issue there was he didn't have all of his units where he needed them at the front attacking. And he keeps doing this thing where he ranges forward with the vessel, which is correct. But after he does one irradiate, he doesn't really pull it back immediately. So he's sort of losing vessels. And we can see F91 trying to take the other third. And Idris going to press onto it again. He's going to irradiate that lurker. And press forward with the vessels and just get an irradiate down where he can. Onto the lurkers in this case. As the lurkers are taking consistent damage over time. That's not due to the Marines, it's due to the Lurkers, and now that the Lurkers are dead, Idra can press forward onto the other third base of F-91, and that is a clear victory for the American Macro Zerg. 
and he's continuing to press forward with the reins. Keep in mind, Idra has a third base. Well and established at this point, and if we look at the vision, just like five minutes ago, Idra has some marine medic at the potential fourth base of F91. So before, when it was two base versus two base, Idra knew he was slightly ahead. Now that it's three base versus two base, in the Terran's favor, he really knows that he's way ahead. And a large contingency of medic marine is going to spring forward here with vessels. Some nice irradiates going down, but with the dark swarm there, Idra will be content to just throw the swarm down and retreat. Now F91 is doing a big attack onto the third base of Idra, and almost all of Idra's units are way, way out on the map, pressing forward into F91, but with some nice marine stem here and a little bit of reinforcement, it looks like Idra is going to be able to propel this attack within reason. Idra, of course, is known for his macro, meaning he is good at consistently not getting supply blocked and always pumping out units even when he attacks. That meant that he had enough units at his natural base to fend off the attack over there at the third, despite the fact that the majority of his units were out there attacking and Idra takes the game, F91 GG's. So that is a good game. Now let me just briefly talk about the extremely important moments that we saw in that game. So when it was 3 base versus 2 base, Idra had units out on the left. He knew damn good and well that F91 was on 3 base. So he used that to his advantage, knowing in his head that once this gets 2 base to 2 base, I have a command center making, I'm going to hit before he has defilers. If I can just kill this 3rd base, I will be ahead very early on. And we, Here we can see the big lurker attack, where F91 sort of thought, okay, I've, I've killed this tanks, now I can win. But he pressed up into a secondary line of tanks. Now this is smart of Idra not to just move all of his tanks up in one control group repeatedly. This meant that F91 was lured into a false sense of, of security, ran up with a plethora of lurkers, lost a huge portion of his, arm, of his army, and because Idra had such a robust backbone of vessels and tanks as well as marines, he knew that he would be able to break this third base. Now this, of course, is in addition to his scouting troops on the left side of the map. You can see right here where he saw the lack of fourth with Medic Marine. Now the reason that's important is because if you saw a fourth, Idra would be able to deduce, well, if I crack this third, he'll just transfer everything or make more drones into the other third and I won't really be ahead. But Idra intelligently scouted and was able to deduce that this risk of pushing up into the Zerg player was worth it. And the fact that Defilers wore out, but Idra hit just in time to avoid the Dark Swarm shows how good he was at this time. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope if you enjoyed that Venomous Classic, you will subscribe, like, and comment. And I will continue to make StarCraft videos, hopefully in addition to some review videos of albums or TV shows. Have a good day, guys.